In a massive operation costing close to $30 million, a huge container of radioactive waste has been transported across Sydney under the cover of darkness. The convoy was escorted from Port Kembla to Lucas Heights by helicopters and heavily armed police, a mission decades in the making. At three o'clock this morning, a convoy stretching hundreds of metres snaked its way north, a 60-kilometre trip from Port Kembla to the Lucas Heights nuclear facility straight off a boat from the UK. You'd be forgiven for thinking the Queen was in the middle of it, but this precious cargo was far from royalty. In fact, it's two tonnes of nuclear waste, not only fortified by the convoy, but 100 tonnes of steel and magma glass. The load required a 12-axle, 96-wheel low loader and three prime movers. In the Australian nuclear industry, we don't do surprises and we don't take chances. 500 people were involved in the operation, including heavily armed federal officers, helicopters not missing a second. The canister can withstand 800 degree temperatures or a jet strike. No such threat this morning, but the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Agency remain tight-lipped about what could have gone wrong. We plan for a number of scenarios and that's an appropriate amount of police for this kind of operation. Today's operation, the final chapter of a nuclear deal that began in 1996 when Australia sent 114 fuel rods to the UK. Overseas labs extracted them for uranium for peaceful purposes. Australia took the equivalent waste back this morning, completing the contract. One byproduct of nuclear material is nuclear medicine, made in Sydney and used by 700,000 Australians a year. Every Australian will need a nuclear medicine dose at some point in their lives. I'm told standing next to the nuclear waste here is no more radioactive than in any other part of Sydney. It cost $26.5 million just to get it to Australia and took several decades of planning, but as to how it will eventually be disposed of is still unclear. It will depend on whether the government follows through on plans to build a more comprehensive facility in South Australia. There's no huge rush. The waste can sit here for decades and Australia won't receive another shipment until the 2030s. Tom Saker, 7 News.